Stand by for some awesome joinery. G'day, my name is Mark. Alrighty, I have a palette that I made out of a coffee table and other ingredients. The plan for this one is very simple, very simple, but hopefully very effective. And what it's gonna let me do is use up as much timber lying around the shed to help me declutter. I am going to need some framework stock and some stock to go around the frame, which is my pallet wood made from that coffee table. Now, whenever I mill up new stock, I'm going to do this. So I can give an idea of how much timber I need. Pretty technical, right? I have some Exactamondo measurements for this thing. So in order to avoid multiple balls ups, I need to do a little sketcheroo, lay out some pieces to make sure I'm on the right track. Science, maths. Dimensions sorted, I need to make a little simple frame. I'll knock it up with pocket holes and of course check square. Okay, before the glue dries, I've got to pull that apart. I allowed for all the dimensions, forgot about, I'd not yet cut these to size. They need to be about five mil or so. See enough, I'll quickly pull that apart, rip them through the table saw, put it back together. Fill up more ingredients. I want some additional framing for two reasons. It'll support my slats and also provide a little internal structure that I need later on in the project. A little more maths to decide how many slats I want on this frame. Then redo the maths after I realise my slats are not wide enough. Hello. Fake pallet wood slats. Ready. As you may know, I love a good chamferization. This time, I'm going to use the table saw as it is very effective compared to using the router table. Chamferization complete. I am stoked. I am cruising along with this project. Now I can cut a heap of miters and start to wrap the wood around the frame, making it super duper strong. To make the miters easy, I cut the miter to an approx size and then I trim off the arse end later, saving me heaps of grief, measuring twice and cutting multiple times until I get it perfect. Some of the miters, you just have to take your time and sneak up on them because if you make an error, you may have to mill up a whole new piece of pallet wood, like I did. Fair thing. From here, lots of glue and spatula action and clamping. Stick with me though, it gets very exciting. Right, so my pallet wood was nowhere near enough. I need about three times that stock. I've got the cedar louvers, other ingredients and they'll do just fine I'll get plenty of slats out of these more gluing more clamping very exciting these steel beams have come in so handy on so many projects they are definitely not a bad thing to get into your shed
Fair dinkum. That could have been a tragedy that may have just broke me. Alrighty. So I still did not calculate the correct amount of pallet slats. So, more ingredients required, more milling required, Right, now I have enough. Thank you. Moving on. I need to whip up a little cross cut sled to safely cut all these little miterized pieces. And you guessed it, more glue, more clamps. Behold, let me give you a few close-ups. What I love about this technique, your tools might be a little bit shit at cutting miters, you might be a little bit shit at cutting miters, but fear not, stick around, it is all gonna make sense at the end. And I call this technique the wrap around nifty cladding a steady or wanker, wanker technique for sure. Okay, pallet challenge, you can use other ingredients, so I've got to go to the other ingredients shelf. Other ingredients. Again, I want to use up as much shit as possible in the shed. So I'll turn this very large piece of pine into a small pieces of pine. that I can then turn back into a large, flat, strong piece of pine. Clear as mud. I also love this technique for using up all your pallet wood offcuts, and you can create yourself a beautiful feature beam like this and these. Other ingredients. We have had this bedhead for a fair time, and it is not going to get a gig in our house yet. And, well, it won't be used as a bedhead, but we thought it would look very nice in this project and give it a very cool second useful life. So, you may have figured out I'm making another desk. And this bed head is going to be the, how do you say it, the desk top part. My flash new beam will support the desktop and also prevent racking once I bolt this thing together. How good are threaded inserts? Behold, here is the beautiful part. You can use all sorts of coloured timbers and your miters can be pretty flippin' ordinary uh, because the paint is going to hide all of that with an extra coat or two. And if you've really shonkered one up a little putty, we'll save the day. Now, if you don't mind me blowing a little hot air up my own freckle, I reckon this looks pretty effective. It has cost me a tin of paint and a little bit of my time. It's also cost me this piece of glass because otherwise it would have been quite difficult to write a letter on this desk. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.